Hey everybody, welcome to episode 87 of the Toys for Games podcast. I am recording this on Thursday, September 8th, 2016. A lonely evening, if you will. I said I am recording this because this is a solo show tonight. There's no we. It's I, me, solo act, Josh Brown, your co-host for the night. Doing a one-man Wrecking Crew impersonation of a podcast. I'm going to try to do this all alone by myself. My normal co host, Jason Greer, he is unavailable to record tonight. Um, just hasn't been able to, to work out this week. Last week was a disaster, also, with us going to PAX West. Um, tonight, he is doing the most adult thing I've ever heard him do, and that is yard work. He's mowing the lawn. So he's doing adult things. He doesn't he doesn't want to talk toys today with me. And that's fine. That's okay. Um I'm gonna take this opportunity to do a solo show, to do a fireside chat, if you will. Uh the deep bench of possible co hosts for the Toys for Games cast. Uh most seem to be unavailable at the time I needed to record. And um that's okay. I that is perfectly okay i have mega yarn yoshi sitting next to me i have a microphone one man one mic one dream one podcast i I don't know how that works um if you're not a fan of solo shows i am sorry this isn't going to be a regular thing i promise um it's definitely not going to have the normal laughs the normal banter the discussion the back and forth that you're used to uh It's really hard to do by yourself. Now I can start doing voices and pretend to talk to myself. Look, that's just going to get creepy. It's going to get weird. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't even know how long this podcast is going to go. Obviously, we can't do an inquire this segment. I don't have anybody to quiz. We do have emails. We have a community question to talk about. We have tons of news to talk about. When I say tons, it's not really tons, but we'll we'll make the most of it. So we're going to sit down. We're going to have... we going to have ourselves a little conversation, just you and me and this microphone. So buckle up, grab a blanket, get cozy, because this fireside chat's about to go down. Uh, Val, uh, my better half, she recommended I, I play some crackling fire noise throughout the podcast to go along with the whole fireside chat thing um i don't know if that's a good idea that could be very distracting when listening to a podcast i don't know how that'll sound if you do hear it in the background that means i decided to do it and it sounded great i thought at least um if you don't hear it then just uh chalk it up to me possibly making a good decision i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens by the end of this episode when i edit it real quick and throw it up for your enjoyment um, before I get started, I need to say a big thank you to our executive producer, George Torres, who we heard from. It's been a while. It's been, it's been a few weeks since we heard from George Torres. Uh, apparently he's been, uh, super busy at his job. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, understandable, but he sent Jason and I a text message last week. He seemed to be in some sort of bar or arcade or something that had a giant, arcade sum sum machine he knows how badly both of us want to check those out uh down in the la area they do happen to have some and and he decided to send us a picture of uh where he was physically next to one of those machines so that looked cool that looked awesome george torres i'm kind of jealous not gonna lie um but yeah, thank you, George Shores, for being an executive producer and uh, sponsoring us and our wacky things that we do on the show and helping keep the lights on, as they say. Um, also, would like to say thank you and a big shout out to the sponsor of the show, which is Devin Lachinsky. Um, usually he wants me to promote his gamer tags. Apparently his friends lists are filled up. No more friends requests. Um, he'd like me to plug something else, and that is his YouTube channel. 
Um, he says, as of now, my channel is called Devin Lachinsky, and that is D E V I N, and his last name Lachinsky is L A S C H I N S K I. Um, he's going to start doing video game related stuff on there. Um, he said, just put up a unboxing video of me unboxing an Xbox, an Xbox One S. So Devin Lachinsky, sponsor of the show, you got it, buddy. YouTube channel, go look it up. I will also insert a link to that in the show notes as well. So uh, go over there on YouTube and uh, support somebody who supports us, Devin Lachinsky. Thank you. Um, before we get started with the news and whatnot, we want to talk a little bit about PAX, PAX West, PAX Prime for the old school PAX goers out there. It was a it was a long fun weekend. I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I feel like Jason needs to share some stories. Uh, we need to have some laughs together. I just don't think I could do it justice talking about it by myself. Um, it's kind of wished Val or Matt or Colin um, were available tonight um, to do this with me, um, or Jason, of course. I, I, I definitely want to talk about it with Jason to you guys. Um, but yeah, we uh, we were there all weekend up in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, we realized quickly that the necessity for us to be there at that show was was lessened by the fact that Lego Dimensions and Skylanders were not there. Nintendo had a had a booth, uh, smaller than usual booth. They had their amiibo display case up. But the newest ones that they had available to look at were the upcoming um, Super Mario Brother um, line of Amiibo with the glow in the dark boo and whatnot. So we didn't get a chance to look at all the upcoming Amiibo that they have announced. Um, so that was kind of a shame. So overall, the fa- we didn't necessarily need to be at the show to cover anything, to get any interviews and you know do any hands-on impressions with anything like that. We did, in fact, host two different panels, and that was the main reason why we were all up there, and we had a lot of fun. Our first panel was Sunday evening. It was Gotta Collect Them All, and That's Okay. Um, It was a panel all about collecting things and the fact that it's okay to collect things, and you shouldn't be ashamed to be a collector, and you should show off your collections, and you should talk about your collections, and you should be... Uh, proud of your collections and we had a lot of fun we had a lot of audience participation with that and we give away a bunch of stuff I had uh, I think everybody that attended got something um, which was remarkable because we had a ton of stuff to give away and and most of the stuff um, was made possible thanks to our patreon uh, patreon.com slash toys for games um, that really aided us in being able to give away a lot of cool stuff to a lot of cool people that came out and wanted to listen to us talk for uh, a good 40 minutes or so before opening it up to Q&A. So we had a blast uh, that was Periscoped and gave the reins of the Twitter and Periscope over to Jason Number 2, who you may know from Amiibo News or Nintendo Wire. And he Periscoped the whole thing. He seemed to do a good job. I don't know. You guys are going to have to give me feedback. I haven't really gone back and watched the Periscope. Um, People were were thanking him for taking the time out of his busy schedule to record it and Periscope it. Um, But secretly, I think he wanted to be there because he wanted to kind of know that it was okay that he collects so many things. He, He is one of the biggest collectors I know. So he was there. Um, a lot of a lot of other people at the panel. It was a lot of fun. It was a seven p.m. panel, so a lot of people were out to dinner or had already left the expo because the hall closed at six. But there was still quite a bit of people there, and that was really cool. Um, we we had fun with it. We learned a lot of things about Matt and Colin and their collecting habits. Um, specifically, we learned that Matt Sonnenberg. Um, Skylanders character list. Um, he used to collect random nuts and bolts that he would find out in his yard on this concrete slab that he thinks were spawning. I don't know. Matt seemed like a weird kid. 
I, I don't I don't know, but it was fun. Regardless, it was fun because hey, I talked about collecting rocks and we talked about collecting pogs and medical propaganda and all kinds of weird stuff. So we had a good time. Um it, it was it was a fun panel. It, we were loose, you know, we loosened up the ties. We were we we were professional to the point that we had to be professional. Other than that, we just had fun. We had fun with the audience. Um, it, it was a good panel overall, and, and I hope many of you got to catch it on Periscope and watch it. Um, I'm going to see if I could strip the audio out of that and possibly put it up on um, the podcast channel, the podcast feed. I don't I don't know if that's possible with um, Periscopes, but we'll see. We'll gi- we'll give we'll give it a sh- um, second panel. Uh, it was myself and the aforementioned Jason number two. We were joined by Lauren, aka Happily Candied. And uh, we did a panel about custom figures. We talked a lot about custom amiibo, but Skylanders and Disney Infinity and even Lego Dimensions were mentioned through the panel. Uh, that panel was Monday afternoon. It was broadcast live on Twitch on one of the official PAX channels. So that was really rad. Um, originally, we were going to have Gondacris and Kickash there with us. Uh, unfortunately, neither one of them were able to make it out in person. Um, uh, just circumstances and it just didn't work out. Unfortunately, we, we wanted them both there. Um, it was going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Gonda was actually able to join us via Skype. And she was working on a custom figure while we were hosting a panel. We would check in with her every once in a while, let her answer questions. So that was awesome. Uh, but big shout out to the superstar of the panel who made the panel far better than it would have been if it was just myself and Jason and Lauren. Um, and that is TJ. Um, you know him as Dark TJ or Hero TJ, but it's TJ from Custom Conquest. And um, he flew up to Seattle Monday morning and flew back home to LA Monday night. Um, he came up just for just for the day to do the panel. That's what he came up to do. Um, and his insight into the world of customs uh, as an artist, as somebody who does this on a regular basis, made the panel a thousand times better because people had questions about the process of making customs. They wanted to know about specific paints and they wanted to know about clay and they wanted to know all kinds of different stuff and we could have made some stuff up but it would have been it would have been um disingenuous to have just us talking about making customs without us actually making cost customs uh the big takeaway from the panel was once again thin your paints folks we've been saying it on this podcast for probably at least 85 episodes now thin your paints uh good advice from tj um but yeah it was an it was an awesome panel it was a great way to end a very long very enjoyable weekend with friends um my better half val she went up with me um as did colin my co-host of the joys of games podcast uh we met matt sonnenberg from skylanderscharacterlist.com he was there uh of course jason flew in Then Jason number two and Lauren, um, Colin's friends joined us for uh, meals in the evening that live in Seattle. It was just one big giant party with a bunch of friends. And it it was just a very good weekend hanging out with a lot of really cool people. Um, Good friends. You know, some of my best friends were there and that um, made it a very special weekend all around. Uh, we we went to panels, we walked around show floors, we spent lots of money, we ate some really good food, um, we did sightseeing through Seattle. Uh, it was just it was a nice weekend. There's there's lots of little stories that will will come up uh, here and there. Um, some I'll probably talk with Colin uh, on the Joys of Games podcast. Some I'll wait till next week when Jason is back. But overall. It was a great weekend, and it it just reaffirmed everything I know about the people that I work with that, you know, help me run this community and whatnot. Um, it's 
they're they're all incredible and special and thank you to to everybody that was um that i got to hang out with um big thank you also to a couple big fans and members of our community uh we got to meet up with evan parker aka the lone goldfish and we also got to meet up with aaron who you might know from twitter a westosaurus rex i believe westosaurus next i can't remember the specific twitter handle aaron i'm sorry you could correct me later go ahead tweet me i'll retweet you if you tweet at me correcting me what your twitter handle is I'll retweet it so everybody knows what the heck I'm talking about. Uh, but we saw them all weekend. Um, it was a lot of... Uh, it, it was really cool to meet people that that like what we do and to hang out with them and, and um, just share the experiences that we were having um, with others. So, And thank you to everybody that watched on Periscope or watched on Twitch or were tweeting with us, um, interacting with us, everything. Thank you to everybody in this community just overall everybody was completely awesome and i can't thank you all enough for that um i think i'm gonna get into news now if that's okay uh also forewarned i don't know how good i'm gonna sound by the end of this podcast talking nonstop by yourself is way more difficult than i give it credit for also i'm super tired i think i'm still recovering from the weekend um, thankfully tomorrow's Friday, got a, a nice, quiet, chill weekend as far as I know planned, which means there was no plans. Um, so, it, you know, forgive me if by the end of this podcast, I start sounding like I've been chain smoking for 80 years of my life. Um, jumping into the news, um, uh, Disney Fandy, real quick, I'm going to say we got nothing. Nothing to talk about Disney Infinity related. Um, you know as well as I do that we're just not going to have that kind of stuff popping up on a regular basis. Um, but, you know, we'll, we're still working out things of what we could do to keep talking about Disney Infinity. But we're just going to we're just going to move along here. Um, we're going to move along to Lego Dimensions, in fact. And Lego Dimensions, part of the podcast, is sponsored by our good friend over in the UK, James Holian, who you can find on Twitter, at Infinity Museum. Um, he is also a fan of Lego Dimensions. He's a fan of Harry Potter, I assume, because that's a UK thing. I think everybody in the UK is contractually obligated to be a fan of Harry Potter. Also, probably Doctor Who, I imagine. I don't know. James, let me know. Let me know. Um, but uh, James Holian, he's a sponsor of this podcast. Um, not of this podcast, of this segment of the podcast, I should say. Lego Dimensions. Now, Lego Dimensions, the next wave, the first wave of the second season that's coming in a few weeks. So, as far as news is concerned, there isn't a lot of news coming out of Lego Dimensions. It's kind of all quiet on the Western Front until the the release date hits. Uh, but we do have some Lego game news, and that is the Lego Harry Potter Remastered Collection is coming to the PS4 on October 18th. Now, what that means, uh, there were not one but two Harry Potter Lego games that were released many moons ago. Um, the first game covers books one through four and the, or movies one through four, years one through four. Um, the second game covered years five through seven, which was four films, uh, cause they, the seventh year was, you know, too big to, to fit into one film. So they split into two, uh, so both of those games, they are being remastered and they're being bundled together in one game. It will be exclusive to the PS4. Now that's fascinating. Um, Lego games are not usually exclusive to a system. We had uh, Lego City Undercover, which was exclusive to the Wii U. Um, so I don't, I don't know what what kind of deal this is, and I don't know if it's going to be something that will eventually come to Xbox One and come to other systems. Um, but I mean, it's definitely. It says right on the box, remastered for PS4. Um, so PS4 owners rejoice if you played the games before and you loved them. 
Now you could replay them. If you've never played a Lego Harry Potter game like myself, now's the perfect opportunity. Again, that, that package is coming out October 18th. Uh, with the Tales from Godric's Hollow podcast I'm doing with Matt as we read through all the Harry Potter books and watch the movies and whatnot. I am 100% on board with this collection coming out now. Like, I am stoked to be able to play this. My concern is it's coming out before I even finish, according to our schedule, book two. So... I may not get it right away, or if I do get it right away, I'm going to have to shelve it because I don't want the game to spoil what's coming ahead in the books and the movies. So I'm in kind of a conundrum here. Regardless, we're going to be playing with Harry Potter in Lego Dimensions, so I'm going to be all about that Harry Potter Lego world. So um, yeah, October 18th, that's going to be good times, good fun. We didn't see any gameplay footage or anything like that, so we don't know what the remastered quote-unquote uh, will look like but I have a feeling they're going to be pretty good because those older games look pretty janky uh, so hopefully the you know they're, they're spiced up quite a bit um, moving on going to talk a little bit about Skylanders Imaginators here Imaginators I know you all love when I say it this segment is sponsored by Matt Sonnenberg you can find on Twitter at SCL Matt you can go to sclmat.com. You can go to skylanderscharacterlist.com. Uh, you can also find him on Twitter at as a matter of Matt. Whew. It's a mouthful to say. Regardless, skylanderscharacterlist.com. That's Matt's baby. Um, he is um, by far the most knowledgeable Skylanders expert that I know personally and a good friend of the show and co-host of the Harry Potter Harry Potter podcast that I do. So, Skylanders news. Uh we got a couple variants possibly coming out. Um word is that we will get a chop scotch variant. Looks like a pumpkin, possibly Halloween themed. Makes sense. Um it's um kind of generically named already Halloween chop chop scotch. Uh, will that be the final name? We don't know. Definitely looks like it's probably Halloween themed just by the looks. Again, it looks like a pumpkin. So that's cool. Um, but that's all we know. Nothing officially confirmed by Skylanders or anything like that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, it, it would make sense if it comes in the first wave, obviously in time for Halloween. Uh, but you know, Skylanders is known to do weird things sometimes. Also the second variant uh, that has shown up in a listing, I believe, in Germany, on a, a GameStop in Germany. I don't, I don't remember the specifics. Uh, again, I'm not the expert here. Um, Steel Hoodsicle. Hoodsicle, of course, is one of the villains turned senseis in this game. Um, the steel, it could go one of two ways. Now we could be talking about like the steel plated um, variant look like Smash Hit had in the previous game, like that weird green and silver color. Uh, I, I hope they don't do that because Hoodsicle looks way too cool to be ruined by those ugly color schemes. I'm hoping, um, as a lot of people probably are, that it's more so like the bronze that they did, um, with the variants this year, this last year, um, and Steel is just like a, a different color variant that they're doing now i don't know why that would be listed in a system if it's going to be like a chase variant type of thing we don't know we, we just don't know um i i just hope the variants look cool this year because this the steel plated smash hit was uh, an abomination of colors it, it hurt the eyes to even look at the thing so I hope they've learned from last year and are making the variants uh, really cool looking this year. Um, so we'll have to wait and see from from Skylanders if we ever get official word of these things or they just kind of show up. We don't know. Uh, speaking of variants, this uh, past week or so, GameStop offered up two Chase variants to purchase online from GameStop. The Bronze Tomb Buggy and the Bronze Bone Bash Roller Brawl were both available to buy on the website. Kind of uh, kind of a unique opportunity to pick up Chase variants, which are 
usually very hard to get. They resale on eBay for a pretty penny. Uh, you, get, you usually have to be lucky and just walk into a store and find a Chase variant, uh, or know you know somebody in retail that snags them when they're unboxing them for you, or, or whatever nefarious methods you tend to use to uh, to as- acquire the Chase variants. Um, so for GameStop just to sell them on their website like this must mean like they just had a surplus of of chase variants um activision is trying to unload and they gave them to gamestop to to get rid of them and sell them so a lot of people from the community seem to pick them up and they already received them they were shipped out like it's, it's a real thing people got them they are 100 percent legit so that is cool that is fantastic um thumpin wumpa islands this is going to be a special level added to Skylanders Imaginators game. Um, it will be accessed using uh, Crash Bandicoot or Dr. Neo Cortex. Um, they said it will be temporarily exclusive to the Crash Edition starter pack, which comes with Crash and Dr. Neo Cortex. Uh, nobody really knew how that worked because they did say that the level itself would be available later on in the year around the holidays. Uh, which coincided with the release of Crash and Dr. Neo Cortex outside of the Crash Edition starter pack. So anybody without um, a PS4 could theoretically finally get those characters as well. Um, there was speculation that they were going to have some sort of like um, a, a, a figure piece that you could put on the portal and activate the level. Um, but it turns out all you need is Crash or Dr. Neo Cortex, and that automatically opens up um, some sort of portal into the dimension of the Thumpin' Wumpa Islands that allows you to play that level. So all you need is one of those, one of those figures. So that kind of makes sense um, when you are able to buy those figures independently of the starter pack, place them on your portal, boom, you can get into Thumpin' Wumpa Islands and have fun in there. Um, like everybody else. So that's cool. I like it. Uh, although, look, the collector in me, yes, would have liked a, another new piece. But, hey, I only have so much room on my shelves. So what can you do? Um, Finally, with uh, Skylanders, there seems to be a Skylanders creator app coming out. We don't know anything. We know nothing at all about this thing other than it possibly exists. All we know is the name. We don't know what it would be, how it works, what kind of functionality it would have with the game. I don't know. I don't know. All we know is that it's called Skylanders Creator, and it is an app. Uh, so, we'll see. I hope it's some sort of tie-in that you could use for Imaginators. I hope it's not just a standalone thing to kind of go hand-in-hand with imaginators without actually holding hands and you just like walk side by side uh close but not too close um so I, I hope it's something that like allows you to create skylanders and somehow upload them into the game and play with them not just create your own thing and then that's it uh, i want it to be some sort of shared experience between the app and the game so cross your fingers uh cross your fingers that they figured that out because that'll be that'll be really rad um, that's it for Skylanders. We're going to move on to Amiibo because we got a lot of things to cover with Amiibo. Uh, the Amiibo part of the podcast, this segment is sponsored by our friend, Michael O'Driscoll, who you can find on Twitter at Amiibo underscore museum. He likes Amiibo. He likes us to talk about Amiibo. Nintendo graciously dropped a lot of Amiibo news for us to talk about. So Michael O'Driscoll, get ready. Hold on to your butts, because this is about to be a crazy ride through the wild, wide world of Nintendo. Um, Nintendo had a Nintendo Direct. They advertised it as being just a 3DS event. Uh, they managed to slip in a whole bunch of Amiibo news. Awesome. Thank you, Nintendo. Thank you for uh, wanting to talk about Amiibo, because we've been kind of chomping at the bit to talk about Amiibo and you must've been hearing our, our cries cries for help. Um, 
they announced 50 new Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. That's right, 50. 50 more. As if the 400 you have in your collection now weren't enough, we have 50 more Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. They will bring new villagers into your town that were previously unavailable in New Leaf. Uh, these cards will be launching along with the update later on this year. Um, the update to the game, of course, where um, all the Amiibo cards will be uh, compatible with New Leaf um, instead of just Happy Home Designer. So that's cool. Um, here's 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 a here's a theory a theory by Josh here. Now, Jason will probably never listen to this podcast. So when this idea actually when this when this prediction comes true, I'm going to need you guys out there to point to Jason, point to this episode and say, Josh was right. You were there. You or you weren't there. You missed it. But he was right. Gosh, darn it. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out in the land because all these cards show villagers in what they're calling mobile homes. Um, driving these vehicles that are packed with furniture and stuff, obviously, to indicate that using them will bring them into your town but they're specifically calling them mobile homes mobile homes now they're promising these cards before the end of the year along with the update to the game uh what else have they said was going to be out before the end of the year let me think about that oh that's right they promised the mobile app for Animal Crossing to come out before the end of the year. Here's the thing. What if there is some sort of cross compatibility with the mobile app as we know it, uh, which we don't know anything about. We just know it's a thing that they're working on uh, with these Amiibo cards and the update to the game. What if all these are starting to bridge into, like, one unified, some sort of Animal Crossing network? I'm just saying, I'm throwing the theory out there. Uh, the fact that they're calling these vehicles mobile homes, and we're getting a mobile app later on. Um, I, I don't know. It, everything seems too coincidental for it not to be the case. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, remind me in a few months whether I'm right or wrong, and... Uh, We'll proceed from there. Regardless, you're getting 50 new Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. Rejoice! All you Animal Crossing fans out there. Uh, Picross 3D Round 2 was not only announced, but it was announced to be available then. Right then and there. Um, a lot of people, big fans of the Picross series. Now, Picross is not getting its own line of Amiibo. Sorry, folks. Uh, but they, the game did come with Amiibo functionality. You scan in an amiibo, and it unlocks a specified puzzle that coordinates with the character of the amiibo that you scanned in. Obviously, you need one of the new 3DSs or one of the amiibo portals to, to use the amiibo functionality. It's completely unnecessary um, in the grand scheme of the things for the game because the game is jam-packed with hundreds and hundreds of puzzles. But if you want a few more crazy kooky um, special puzzles that are based on your favorite characters. You could use Amiibo in the game and uh, unlock some new puzzles. So that's cool. More just little little tiny little bits of uh, functionality added to Amiibo every day, it seems like. Um, totally making it worth uh, the price of admission for Amiibo. Um, the big news, though, two different, two different announcements. Uh, first... We are getting 30th Anniversary Zelda Amiibo. We're getting four different figures. We're getting an 8-bit Link. We're getting Ocarina of Time Link. And we are getting a two-pack of Wind Waker Link and Zelda. Um, all four of those will be compatible with Breath of the Wild. We don't know to what extent. We don't know what they will do in the game. We already know that Wolf Link Amiibo will um, essentially be a companion in Breath of the Wild if you scan in the, the Wolf Amiibo. So what these four are going to do in that game, not a clue. Do they look amazing? Absolutely. They look so good. I'm so excited for those. Here's another bold Josh prediction. I don't think they're done. I think those are four. I don't think those are going to be the only four that they come out with. Um, Link 
uh, Link to the Past. Like, we get an amiibo based on that, please. Uh, Majora's Mask amiibo. Please, please, please. Skyward Sword. Um, like, how cool would an amiibo be of Link riding that, that giant bird, you know? Um, there's so uh, Minish Cap. Uh, Spirit Tracks. Like, there's so many different Links. So many different, you know, Zelda games to pull from. I don't think that these four are the only four that we're going to get. I-, I think they're going to flood us with a bunch of different Links. Um, and hopefully some more Zeldas too. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely see this set of four not being the only four that we get for, um, you know, this, this set of Amiibo. I think these are just the first four just to get, just to whet the appetite of the Amiibo fans out there. Um, so stay tuned for that because I, I feel like Nintendo has, has more cards up their sleeve than this ace. So Stay tuned. Um, the biggest news of the day was, of course, the um, unraveling, should I say, of the Yarn Poochie Amiibo. Uh, they announced that Yoshi's Woolly World will be ported over to the 3DS. Uh, it was formerly just a Wii U exclusive. Uh, the new 3DS version will have much more Poochie in it, because everybody loves Poochie. And uh, they're coming out with a Yarn Poochie Amiibo, much in the the same vein of the Mega Yarn Yoshi and the the uh, regular Yarn Yoshi trio. Uh, Poochie looks amazing. Uh, you'll be able to get him in a bundle with the 3DS game, or you'll be able to buy Poochie alone, which I understand why they're doing it, because they want as many people to get Poochie, Yarn Poochies as possible. However, I think the game will sell a lot better if they made it a bundle with the Yarn Poochie. But who knows? Maybe that didn't work so well with Chibi Robo. I mean, we did get a single release of Chibi Robo after um, the bundle came out. But, um, hey, I'm happy that everybody's going to be able to get a Poochie Yarn Amiibo, whether they buy the game or not. It's going to be awesome. Um, I can't, like, just, I cannot wait to have it sitting next to the other Yarn Amiibo. They just look awesome. I remember people, like, making their own Poochies when the game came out. Um, so this is, is finally kind of like uh, the fan service that we've all been waiting for. Uh, finally, with Amiibo, yesterday during the Apple conference, that's right, we're talking Apple on the show, and we're going to talk about it in high regards because Jason's not here to tell me otherwise. Um, Apple had a press conference. They were unveiling the new uh, Apple Watch, the iPhone 7, uh, the new iOS, all kinds of different stuff. They also had Miyamoto and uh, Bill Trennan on stage from Nintendo. Nintendo on stage at an Apple press conference. Almost broke the internet. Uh, That was something that nobody ever expected would ever happen. Ever, ever, ever. And there it is happening. It was complete shock. Nobody knew it was coming. They, everybody seemed to be in the dark. Then it happened. Uh, We're getting a Mario game um, on iOS. We're getting Pokemon Go app officially on the new um, Apple Watch. All kinds of cool things. Um, after, After the conference, Miyamoto did an interview, I believe, with IGN. And he was saying how with the new NFC chip that Apple is using in the iPhone 7s, um, it will make it suddenly a a realistic possibility to use Amiibo in functionality with smartphones now. He didn't say it was for sure happening. He said it was now something that they could look into and that they could talk about and they could think about. Um, it definitely sounded like there was already interest in it. So we don't know. We don't know how far along they might be with this concept. Um, I'm just super stoked for the fact that we might get Amiibo functionality on iPhone. So that's bizarre and weird and awesome at the same time. So we'll definitely have to stay tuned for that to hear uh, more as, as things develop in the mobile world for Nintendo. Um... That's about it for news. Uh, big shout out to Beasts of Balance, um, the the board game slash semi toys to life um, experience. 
Uh, we had the developer on the show um, several months back. We played it at PAX East. Um, they tweeted out a picture, I believe, yesterday or today. It's it's the game's real. It, it's being manufactured in China. Like there are actual boxes, sealed boxes. Like we are dangerously close to getting these things. And you know the target date was November. November can't come soon enough because I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. I can't wait to play it with the family. I just can't wait to see the final product. Um, I'm so proud of this team for what they've done for for launching this game, for being so successful with it so far. Um, I can't wait for everybody else out there to play it and try it because it's so much fun. Um, again, I can't wait just to play it myself um, just over and over again. It's, it's going to be one of those games that we play with the kids a lot um, for sure. So I'm excited. Congratulations to them. Um, they are one step closer to to launching this thing, the wa- launching a product officially, um, physically, which is incredible. So my hats off to them for sure. Um, gonna move on here. We're done with news. Uh, we're done talking about packs. We are going to move on to the. Uh, community question of the week. Uh, this week, it's going to be sponsored by our friend Christopher Long from Long's Toys. You can find him on Twitter at C, the letter C, Long83. And please visit his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash Long's Toys. Um, he is a sponsor of the community question. Um, as always, we're going to give a prize away to the... Uh, the winner who has the best response to the community question. Um, I will be the judge, jury, and executioner this week. I'm the the sole picker of the winner. Um, so, you know, forgive me if I don't pick you. But, hey, I'm doing the best I can. It's a one-man show. Uh, the community question this week was, what Toys to Life franchise are you most looking forward to as we approach the fall and why? Reason I asked this, Jason and I were standing in line. We were about to watch the PAX Rumble. And uh, I said to him, as much as I'm excited for LEGO Dimensions to come out, you know, the new story pack, um, the new level packs, um, the Harry Potter figures, all that stuff, as much as I'm excited for that, I am just brimming with excitement of Skylanders Imaginators. And he had the complete opposite reaction. He said he is far less excited about Skylanders than he is Lego Dimensions. Granted, he's still feeling uh, kind of burnt by Activision and their creation crystal debacle um, that they still haven't publicly addressed um, further. So I, I feel like he's he's still mad at them and he doesn't want to admit how excited he is for the launch of Skylanders. So he's... He's all on board for Lego Dimensions. I myself, I, I'm stupidly excited for Skylanders. I, I think it's just this whole starter pack, the feeling of buying starter packs and the new brand new game, not just additions to a game. It's just a different feeling, and I'm, I'm super stoked for it. Don't get me wrong, super excited for Lego Dimensions. Um, stupidly excited for Lego Dimensions. Uh, but there's just a little bit something more special to me right now as it stands with uh, the release of the new Skylanders game. So, ask the community out there. Um, You guys on Twitter responded in droves, and I thank you for that. I'm going to go ahead and read through them, despite um, it being probably a bad idea for my voice. Let's uh, see what we could do here. Um, Starting off with Shopkins Inquirer, who is banned from ever winning this contest. Bless them. Uh... Coming through with another great answer. Uh, They answered with Playmation. Can't wait for that Star Wars set. Um, The next uh, person to respond was Malik at Rose F. Death. Said, I only know Amiibo, so I'm loving Boo and the Lynx. Just wish we knew about the final Smash. That's so true. We still haven't seen the final Smash characters as Amiibo. Uh, Those need to happen soon, Nintendo. Soon. Uh, Alex Carejo at Atari Alex said, As much cool stuff 
Dimensions is bringing, I'd say the Dark Horse Infinite Arms. I just want to know what they're up to. Alex, me too. We need to know what's going on with the Infinite Arms. Adam Tuttle, um, at Phoenix back, fire, back for fur? Uh, so trick question. Infinite Arms, soon we will have figures we can customize to look like their in-game counterparts. And no portal. Infinite Arms. Just something. Evan Parker at the Lone Goldfish said, It is with great insect-related reservations. I look forward to Skylanders Imaginators. Also, shout out to Beast of Balance. Evan Parker, you're a man after my own heart. Uh, Big Mike at Big Mike 8109, my co host of the Triple P podcast, Pinfalls, uh, Pops, Pinfalls, and Payoffs. Wow, I forgot the name of my own podcast. It's a wrestling podcast we do together. Um, he says Lego Dimensions for the Ghostbusters story pack. Simple to the point. Kyle at Deadpool underscore Ranger said Disney. Oh, wait, never mind. Ouch. Too soon. Too soon. Long's Toys at C Long 83, sponsor of the segment, uh, said Lego Dimensions all the way. So many great franchises being added. Can't wait. Uh, ben Pieface Miller said um, at Chrysolite Stone said the return of Disney Infinity. Obviously, that's not happening. Uh, William Thorndike at Red Eyes 070 said Skylanders because we got the chaos. Jess Carter at Penguin 852 said Lego Dimensions Year 2. I can't wait to play the new worlds. I could check the calendar several times a day, hoping it's the 27th. Soon, Jess. Soon. Jeff Grimes at Jeff Grimes 23 said for all of its 80s goodness, Gizmo, Mr. T, and E.T. I pity the fool that plays something else. Talking about Lego Dimensions, of course. Um, Chris at, uh, Cincy Kendo said Disney Infinity Rogue One. Hashtag denial. Uh, August Larson at August Larson said, I can't wait for Lego Dimensions new franchises. Adventure time is why I jumped on board. Good time to jump on board indeed. Adventure time is going to be so good in this game. Sebastian at Fried Be- Seabass said Lego Dimensions season two. Wait, Skylanders. But that glow in the dark boo. And Pokemon. It's going to be a good winter. Uh, Nick Locke at Nick Nick's Not Amused. Ha, get it. Said Lego Dimensions for the Adventure Time expansions, especially the Adventure World. Brian at Billy, D- Billy DJ Dog said it's time to crash this Toys to Life skyship. Unless things change, Crash and Imaginators will be my last go round. Uh, Matt Agers. At Toya Kinney said Skylanders to play with our daughter and having her make the character I use. Several thumb up emojis. Andre Sotero at uh, Gold Otero 101 said the f- um, as much as I love Amiibo, Lego Dimensions has the most has me mostly excited. I won't actually use an Amiibo in my games because the functionality is not there. Lego is players our gives players hours of content. And so many new characters. Can't wait for September. It is September, Andres. Um, Harrison Mays at Blue Dragon Kaiser said, I may be slightly disappointed at the moment, but Skylanders. Hashtag reset the battle class. My excitement still lives, though. Uh, Joe Euler at Snowguard77 said, I'm looking forward to Skylanders Imaginators. I plan on running a Twitch stream. Richard. Richard underscore S123 said Amiibo because those Zelda figures look great and glow in the dark. Boo! What could be better than that? Tori um, at Tori Raz said Lego Dimensions because of all the possibilities, of course. Sam Fingard um, at Sam underscore Fingard said Skylanders because we got the chaos. Finally, Sean Dolly. Sean underscore Dolly said Lego Dimensions. With its bigger franchises, story packs, battle arenas, and unique minifigures, what's not to love? Lots of good responses, folks. Lots of good responses, indeed. Um, I need to pick a winner. I need to pick a winner. This one's tough. This one's tough. Um, I think I'm going to give it to Matt Agers at Toya Kenny. 
who said the Skylanders to play with our daughter and having her make the character um, I use. So super excited to have his daughter make a character um, they could use in the game. Um, great answer. I love uh, family related answers like that. Um, you know, not always. Sometimes I'll pick the funny one. Sometimes I'll pick the emotional one. Tonight, that's the one I pick. So, Matt, get a hold of me. Um, I got a mystery box to send your way, my friend, uh, with three or more special curated handpicked items thrown in there uh, for you to open and be surprised by. Uh, thank you all for responding, as always. I uh, look forward to doing it next week once again. Moving right along. Again, we don't have Infinity. Uh, inquire this. Infinity. Wow. Still hurts. Um, inquire this segment because, you know, I can't quiz myself. That would be weird. And nobody would like to hear that. We're going to move on to emails. I'm going to do my best to read emails and answer them and react to them. And if they're addressed to Jason, I'll fill in what I think Jason would say. Um, email part of the podcast. This one is sponsored by our friend Evan Parker, a.k.a. The Lone Goldfish, who you can watch do his thing. He's been playing Skylanders a lot over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Lone Goldfish. Evan, again, it was nice uh, meeting you up in Seattle and hanging out. Um, he was also awesome enough to do some pin trading to get Val, my better half, um, this um short neck giraffe pin uh, she's been wanting this this short neck giraffe pin for a while um he managed to scoop one up for her. uh so big thank you to evan for that because she absolutely loved it um so again we gotta get to emails first email this comes in from brady it says hey guys haven't written in because my grandpa is in the hospital and i have been busy dealing with that uh brady totally totally understand my friend um hope your grandpa is doing well hope you and your family are doing well um that's always stressful and uh you know we, we wouldn't ever expect you to write into our dumb show um when you're dealing with that kind of stuff but you know we we're here for you uh we hope that we could uh ease your mind a little bit when you're listening to us Anyways, he says, back to the email, I was wondering how you would rank the franchises and why you put them in that order. Mine would be, number one, Disney Infinity, because it was my first franchise and it has a special place in my heart. Two, Lego Dimensions, got scared, or got second, even though I'm a diehard Lego fan, Disney Infinity still tops it. Third, Amiibo, um, got third because of its functionality, enough said. And fourth, Skylanders, um... It was last because I like having memorable characters, and it was a pretty cool game, but the other ones mean more to me because of the characters. Sorry about the long email. Until next time, Brady. Brady, that was far from being a long email. Trust me. Um, how I would rank the games. Now, we're going to rank them combined, games and figures. So, it's going to be tough because Amiibo doesn't really have its own standalone game. Um, but... Uh, some figures I like more than I do the games. Um, number one. Wow, this is tougher than I thought. Um, wow. Skylanders, number one. Yeah, I, that might change tomorrow. It was probably different yesterday. I feel like it's something that's always changing. Um, Skylanders, number one. I. I mostly love the characters i love the games I've, I've it got me into toys to life that's why i'm here doing this thing um always will have a special place in my heart even though they aren't characters that i was attached to when i first started i am now attached to the characters um the recurring characters and such so um yeah skylanders uh number two i would say amiibo always been an, an amiibo fan they may not do spectacular things in games but the being able to collect figures of my favorite nintendo characters um has definitely been something i've always wanted and uh yeah I, I would say amiibo number two number three lego dimensions i've always been a fan of lego games um never was a fan of collecting lego minifigs um 
but putting the vehicles together and having the figures, um, the game is phenomenal. They did a great job. They keep adding new franchises. Um, and then fourth would sadly be Disney Infinity. Like, I love the figures. Um, I, I think they have the best looking figures of all the franchises by far. The games I had fun, fun with, um, especially like the specific levels, but like the creation part of it and the, the toy box and all that stuff was never for me. I never really liked it. It was a game like I would, I would get through whatever uh, level pack there was and then wouldn't play it very much until the next one came out type of thing. Um, plus it's dead now, so it can't really be one of my favorites. <sighs> Harsh reality folks. Um, next email is from Tashmon. It says, hello, Toys for Games crew. Once again, it's me, Tashmon. Again. It's been rough being a Skylanders fan in this day and age. The Creation Crystal news is sad and frustrating. I personally will not be affected by it, but knowing that some innocent little kid might have their first experience ruined by the decision hurts a lot. Still, we can't lose out hope. Even with the dumb decisions being made by Skylanders HQ, we still have an awesome game to look forward to. And it's the experience that counts. If you could choose to skip the rest of this email you want to, that might be a sensitive subject for some. It says, I also wrote in this email because I wanted to remind people that this is just a video game and to not be too worried if it turns out for the worst. I realized this by stumbling across this little gem of a forum thread talking about how Skylanders is super satanic and evil. I'm going to go ahead and click the link here and see where this takes me. Um, in his email, he was saying, feel free to do a little dramatic reading of this if you feel like. Conspiracy theorists are a constant source of hilarity for me. Signed, Tashmon. Um, let's see, how long is this? Woo! Woo! This is super long. I'll read the first paragraph, just so you can get a gist of what's going on. Um, this was a, uh, a form. Um... Says, as we all know, Hollywood and the secular video game industry are now trying to start brainwashing children young right out of their mother's womb into liberal liberal and satanist ways. Satanist ways? Satanist ways. Their brains are more like sponges when they are young, more absorbent of the information around them and what they see which is why you should start searching your children the word of God at every young age. Um, They're outrageous. Downright scandalous, even. But what I'm about to show you are actual, honest-to-goodness images of these new Skylanders. More like Helllanders. Video game characters flaunting their nudity like the disturbed and perverted sickos they are. So have the kids leave the room for a while and get ready for some righteous indignation when you take a gander at these disturbing snapshots the three photos are of hex trigger happy and stealth elf um as you can see the game brainwashes their children into practicing demonic witchcraft and wizardry worshiping disturbing demons and turns our female kids into terrible harlots and whores but they're Ain't no modesty whatsoever when it comes to this reptilian demonic monstrosity. And uh, it's followed by a picture of Spyro the dragon. Um, The post goes on for quite a while. Um, And I'm not going to read anymore because holy cow. Wow. Uh, Hey, everybody's entitled to their beliefs. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Uh, Not everybody is forced to love and adore Skylanders in the way that many of us do listening to this podcast. However, I think it might be a little bit of a reach to think that um, Hollywood, as they put it, is trying to brainwash the the youth of um, this world with Skylander characters. I feel like that's a, it's kind of a stretch, but hey, to each their own. Um, so thank you, Tashmon, for sending that in because um i I could see why you would be amused by it um next email is from sean dully i said hey toys for games cast i'm just writing in to tell you about an interesting piece of trivia i found apparently lego dimensions is not the first crossover game to feature the goonies back in the font back on the famicom japanese nes 
a game called Konami YY World was created. This was a Castlevania style game which allowed you to play as multiple characters. One of these characters was Mikey from the Goonies as Konami developed slash published the Goonies NES game. Mikey, however, was not the strangest guest character as King Kong was also playable. A link to the game's wiki page can be found below. Uh, he says, I hope you found this small piece of trivia interesting. Keep the Toys to Life community awesome. Thanks, Sean. I did not know that about that game. And it's, uh, I, I knew about the Goonies NES game. Um, so, or Goonies 2, I believe it was called. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Next email. Uh, this is Alex at Atari Alex on Twitter. It says, Dear Josh and Mystery Co host, Jason number two. No, it's Mega Yarn Yoshi. You got it wrong, Alex. He says, as a follow-up to my question two weeks ago, if you could choose one Nintendo game to get an HD remake with an Amiibo bundled in, a la Twilight Princess HD, which game would you choose? Personally, I would love to get Super Mario Sunshine HD. I've been wanting an HD remake of that game forever anyway because I love it so much, but an Amiibo of Mario with Flood would look so incredible. Thanks, Alex. I love that. I love that so much. Super Mario Sunshine is one of the best Mario games out there. Hands down. I absolutely love and adore that game. I would kill for a remake of that game. Um, I would love a Mario Galaxy um, HD remake. I don't think it necessarily probably needs it as much as Sunshine would, but it would be glorious. Um, you could have like... Um, like the, the, the spaceship that Mario's on that looks like his head. Like that could be an amiibo. I think that'd be cool. I don't know how you would use it or what it would do. Um, but it would be pretty rad. Or Mario in a bee suit would be really cool. Um Hmm. I don't I don't I mean obviously like the Metroid games are easy answers. Um Yeah, that's tough. Uh, I, I still kind of always go back to punch out. I'd like to see more punch out. So, um, yeah, but man, I love the Mario sunshine, um, HD remake. That would be fantastic. And Mario with a flood. <sighs> perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, next email is from green armadillo it says, dear Josh, I have two questions about things that are related to, but possibly out just outside normal toys for games territory this week. Question number one. I see there's a new Marvel Tsum Tsum game out this week, but I'm not seeing any details about it if the plush toys are any way relevant to the game. Are these two completely separate products, or are there DLC codes or something to unlock the physical Tsum Tsums you own in a game? Green Armadillo it is just like the regular Tsum Tsum mobile game. Uh, it has no connection to the vinyl Tsum Tsums or the plush Tsum Tsums. It is just a Marvel themed Tsum Tsum game. It's different in the fact that you could like, it has like minor skill trees. You could unlock uh, special um, attacks by your Marvel characters. There's like boss modes or, or boss rush, boss battles. Um, so it, it's definitely different, but it plays pretty much the same way as the, the traditional Tsum Tsum mobile game. Um, and again, there's no connection to the plushes or the vinyls at all. Um, unfortunately, uh, question two, press sites are reporting that the Pokemon go wristband device, not only loots nearby Pokestops, but also catches Pokemon for you. I'm very puzzled how this works without making half the game pointless. Does pushing the button result in a guaranteed catch? Does it use up your supplies? And if so, does it know when to use berries and higher quality Pokeballs? I feel like either you'll never push the button because you don't trust it to not waste balls and miss out on rare catches or else you're playing uh, to never or else you're paying to never play a core part of the game because the wristband does things better than the player could hope the show is going well green armadillo um yeah so we'll collect loot from pokestops um which is nice um don't need your phone for that. Um, you can stay in your pocket. As far as like the catching the Pokemon, we don't really know how it's going to work. I, I can't imagine it's a guaranteed catch. Um, I don't know if it'll know when to use raspberries or the um, the higher 
percentage balls to catch the Pokemon. I have no idea how that's going to work. I do know that you'll only be able to catch Pokemon that you've previously caught. Uh, so you have to have caught a Pokemon before to catch it with the wristband. Um, so any ones that would be new to you, you would still have to pull out your phone and use it that way. Um, I don't know if there'll be like a setting that you could say always use a Raspberry and always use an Ultra Ball or, you know, I, specifics. So you could set it up ahead of time. So when you're out and about, you could push the button and it will it will do what you want it to do without the worry or fear of it just wasting Pokeballs. No idea. But it comes out next week, September 16th. So um, I think by then we'll we'll all know kind of what's going on with it. Final email of the night of uh, Josh's Fireside Chat episode. This one is from DMU Girl 2008 She says, hey guys, here are these week's questions. Okay, I'm going to try to answer them as fast as I can after reading them. Uh, we'll see what happens. Lego Dimensions. Which of the figures now so far do you feel will have unique skills? Uh, I think Gizmo will. Um, Jake from Adventure Time will. Those are my answers. Uh, if Lord Vortec were an exclusive figure, what is the maximum you would pay to get him? All the money in the world. That would be the max. Um, no, I, I would I would want him. It, it depends how exclusive he was. Depends what he was exclu exclusive to. Will it be exclusive to like a starter pack? I'll buy a new starter pack for it. Is it exclusive to a convention? Well, I'll buy one on eBay. 50, 60 bucks probably would be the max. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Um, how many gold bricks do you think year two content will add? I know there is no way to know. Just thought it might be fun to come back later and see who got closest. Um, all of year two, how many gold bricks? I will go out and say half the amount that's in year one. I don't remember the exact amount, but I will say half of whatever's in year one. Uh, Amiibo. How many Pucci Amiibo are you buying? As many as I possibly can. Flat out. Do you think the Olimar Amiibo will do anything in the Pikmin 3DS game? Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. I hope so. It better. That would be rad. Any guesses on what many versions of Link will do in Breath of the Wild? I have a feeling Breath of the Wild is going to incorporate the full timeline of The Legend of Zelda we will see many different versions of Link throughout the game um, in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, I feel like there's going to be like time traveling and whatnot. Um, so I feel like they are going to incorporate the past Links into the game somehow. I don't know how exactly, um, but that, that's my best guess. The final question, how many more Legend of Zelda Amiibo do you think they will announce in the 30th anniversary collection? Going out of limb, I'll say eight more. Eight more. Just a random number. But I'll say eight. Uh, thank you all for your emails, um, as always. I, I know it wasn't as fun to do without Jason here, um, given his input. But I, I hope you uh, you suffered through it um, without too much uh, headache and frustration listening to me talk by myself all night. I do greatly appreciate it. This has been a very fun fireside chat with you guys out there. Uh, de definitely not going to be something I do quite often. Um, possibly for the last time ever. Depending on how much you guys like or hate this episode. But we needed to do an episode. We, we owed you guys an episode. We need to get something out there. Next week, I promise, we'll be at full staff. Uh, we will come back with a with a with just an awesome show, as we always do, for episode 88. We are 13 episodes away from episode 100. We're not getting very many ideas and submissions about what we should do for episode 100. Uh, so please, please, please help us decide what you guys want from episode 100. We want to make it special. We want to make it fun. We want to do something cool. Don't know what, but we want to do something. So we want to hear from you. Um, with that being said, we're going to wrap up a episode 87 here. You can find me on Twitter personally at the noise. You could follow Jason on Twitter at Jason Inquirers. Um, also, Skylanders, Inqu Skylanders, INQ, and Brick INQ, of course. 
Um, you can follow the show at Toys for Games on Twitter. You can email us, podcast at toysforgames.com. Our lovely website is toysforgames.com. You can check out our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash toys for games. Um, Big Ken, he's running the Instagram account now, Toys for Games, so be sure to check that out. I have no idea what he has planned for it, but he's definitely going to be more active on it than I was because the man is a social media marketing machine. Um, and if you'd like to, to support us on Patreon, uh, like so many of you do already, um, and, and help us do awesome things like packs and be able to give away tons of giveaways to people and, you know, just give back to the community as much as we possibly can. Um, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash toys for games. That being said, uh, we'll be recording joys of games with Colin. We have two, uh, weeks to get out here, Xbox and PlayStation weeks. Um, just put up a, the newest episode where we finished the book, the Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, with my co-host Matt Sonnenberg. Um, that podcast is named Tales from Godric's Hollow. You can find that wherever podcasts are sold. Newest episode just went up yesterday. Um, also, we'll be recording with uh, my co-host Big Mike. We will be recording our wrestling podcast this Sunday evening after the newest WWE pay-per-view, Backlash. Um, that podcast is called the Triple P Podcast. Pops, pinfalls, and payoffs. If you like pro wrestling, this is the podcast for you. Um, also, don't forget about Gotta Watch Them All, uh, Ken and his wife's podcast about re-watching all of the Pokemon cartoons. And talking about all things Pokemon in general. Having a lot of fun with that. Um, I think that's all the podcasts I need to talk about. All the things we got going on. It's uh, Toys for Games Network. It's growing. It's expanding. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, thank you all for supporting everything that we do. And, and making all of this so special to us. We appreciate it so much. Uh, but until next time. Happy hunting collectors. Happy hunting collectors.